A little while ago, the Warriors' young core consisted of Wiseman, Kaminga, Moody, and Poole, four young and talented ballers who uh, fit together perfectly on the court. I mean, Wiseman is a center, Kaminga is a small forward, Moody is a shooting guard, and Poole is a point guard. The future looked like it couldn't be any brighter for Golden State. Until, uh, this happened. With the 28th pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select Patrick Baldwin Jr. from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. If you're wondering what this guy is capable of, just watch these. down in the paint, but Coach White has done a fantastic job with the back here now, even the only returner that is not out. His name is Patrick Baldwin Jr., or PBJ for short. This dude is a six foot 10 power forward who can score at all three levels, and with him, the young Warriors core has become dangerous, full of potential, and most importantly, complete. Sheesh, guys. The league really made a huge mistake they should have never let the Golden State Warriors draft peanut butter and jelly. I know what some of y'all are thinking. The kid was like the 28th overall pick. He wasn't even in the lottery. So what gives? What's he gonna add? Well, before I get into how and why the league made a huge mistake, I first gotta get into this kid's backstory a bit for some context. In PBJ's junior high school season, which was the last time he was healthy for a full season, the dude averaged 24.3 points, 10.8 rebounds, and just completely dominated his peers. I mean, he had a silky smooth shooting stroke, which he used to knock down both three-point shots and mid-range shots. He had the ability to attack the basket and was capable of bringing the ball down the floor like a guard and playmaker for his teammates. At about this time, he was one of the top high school recruits in America, and ESPN ranked him as the fifth best player for the class of 2021. Just for some context, Kaminga was fourth on ESPN's list for prospects in 2020. Oh, and uh, just before I forget, also around this time, Baldwin was featured in an intense head-to-head -head matchup for the number one player in the country between himself and the 2022 number one pick, Paulo Banquero. Are you slowly seeing now why getting picked at 28 was probably the steal of the draft? Man, Bob Myers really doesn't get enough credit for finding diamonds in the rough. Anyways, in his senior season debut, Baldwin didn't miss a beat and dropped 43 points. Unfortunately though, in his very next game, he suffered a season-ending ankle injury. At this point in time, however, college recruiters didn't care if he was sidelined with injuries in his last season in high school. A 6'10 beast who could essentially do it all? Top colleges around the country wanted him to play for them, including Duke and Georgetown. PBJ could have easily committed to any of these schools to gain more popularity, but instead, he went to play for Milwaukee, where his father was the head coach. Immediately out of the gates, Baldwin Jr. showed once again why he was rated as the fifth best player by ESPN. In his debut, he scored 21 points and collected 10 rebounds. Unfortunately, bad luck once again came his way. PBJ soon suffered a leg injury, which kept him out for a few games, followed by another ankle injury. And that was it for his college career. In the span of just a few short months, PBJ went from a potential top lottery pick to a borderline second round pick, which is exactly why in the entire 2022 draft, he's the biggest wild card. I mean, here's what longtime ESPN college basketball analysis Jay Billis had to say. He's an extraordinarily talented player. He's got all the measurables, everything that would indicate that he's going to have a really good NBA career. You can call it a flyer if you want, but you're not going to get a player at that talent level at that spot. They got a lottery talent at 28. That's a good risk to take. He's got a chance to be really, really good if he stays healthy. Honestly, if you ask me, the chances of Baldwin getting healthy is pretty high, especially the way sports science has developed in today's NBA. I mean, if LeBron James can still be playing at an MVP caliber level at age 37, and if Kevin Durant can play at an MVP caliber level after suffering an Achilles injury, then anything is possible. But anyway, how unfair is that for a championship team to literally draft a kid who just a short while ago was battling for the number one rank in the entire country? Sheesh, guys. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
You guys are gonna love this. Warriors fans dug up some eerie similarities about the mental psyche between PBJ and Steph Curry. You see, back in January of 2022, when PBJ was playing for Milwaukee, not only was he dealing with injuries, but his team was losing a ton of games too. During that time, Baldwin tweeted, I love everyone in this locker room. We are going to figure this out. Then uh, when he was drafted into Golden State, some Warriors fans were able to dig up a very old tweet by Steph Curry back in 2009 when the Warriors were also piling up losses. The tweet went like, promise to all Warrior fans, we will figure this thing out. If it's the last thing we do, we will figure it out. Man, I ain't saying he's going to be like Steph, but if his competitiveness and mental psyche is anything like Steph's, the league is in for a lot of trouble. Getting drafted by Golden State was the best possible scenario that PBJ could have asked for. And here's why they should have never let the Warriors draft him. First off, the main thing that hampered Baldwin from becoming a top five pick in the draft was his ankle injury. And if I'm not mistaken, there's someone in the Warriors organization that could give him a few pointers on how to take care of that. Second off, if there's any organization in the league that has the ability to unleash a player's full potential, it's the Golden State Warriors. Here's what Bob Myers had to say about PBJ and his future growth. He's going to have to put it together. He hasn't yet. He was a top 10 recruit out of high school. Now he's in the NBA. So he's going to have to get up to speed. We invested a lot in our player development, and we believe that we could take talent and hopefully cultivate it. We think he's one of those guys. And lastly, being on the Warriors means that PBJ is going to have a complete year to get healthy and develop his skills. Because Steph Curry and the Warriors are championship contenders in 2023, Baldwin Jr. probably isn't going to see much court time in the NBA. Instead, I'm sure the training staff is first going to work on getting him completely healthy, then they're going to work on his skills as they enlist him onto their G League affiliate, the Santa Cruz Warriors. With him having a complete year to just get healthy and get better, just imagine what he can be for the Warriors. I mean, standing at 6'10 with the ability to score effortlessly at all three levels, he kind of reminds me of Michael Porter Jr., who, as we all know, is a beast when healthy. Now, let's zoom out and look at the big picture objectively for a minute. Steph Curry is currently signed on until 2026. But the truth is, he's probably going to be a warrior until he's like 40 or something. He'll eventually decline physically and as a player, but if there's one thing he'll never lose, it's his championship habits and work ethics. Over the course of the next few years, those habits and work ethics will trickle down completely into the new core, and that'll set the league on fire. I mean, he said it himself that his dream is for Poole to become an all-star, for Kaminga to become an all-defensive player, and for Wiseman to become an MVP candidate. If he could add on one more to his list, I'd bet it's to get PBJ to become an all-NBA player. What a lineup, guys. And the truth is, Curry will have an opportunity to play with this complete unit in a year or two when they grow a little. Man, the development of the Warriors is really something. I mean, they're able to win championships and build their dynasty at the same time, which is unheard of. The Philadelphia 76ers should be taking notes on how the Warriors did this because this is the real process.